Welcome to the podcast, Appetite for Distortion, episode number 284. My name is Brando. I couldn't wait to do another episode. Like, this is as live, I feel, as live could get. Rich, I want, I wish I had the technology. I guess I do, but I wanted to enjoy the show. I could have done like a podcast, I guess, from Hershey Park if I wanted to, if I was a really, like if I was a radio station, but I'm one man. Um, so, Rich, I just want to bring you in on this because I was at <laughs> Hershey Park as I'm recording this. I wanted to have it again as real as uh, in real time as a podcast could be. So, we're recording this on Sunday. Uh, the first Guns N' Roses show on, I don't know, does it have a name? Rich, do you know if, if this tour has a, an official name? I don't. I don't. I don't believe it, it does. Yeah. So the unnamed GNR tour. I know uh, what the radio station I work for is, is. A lot of place people are calling. It's radio stations are calling it. Like, we're effing back. So I don't know if this is the effing okay. back tour. I, I don't know if it is. It's the post COVID tour. I feel like so my son had speculated that, but I wasn't sure. He's kind of stalking behind me right now. All right. <laughs> cool. he, he can pop in. Was your son at the show last night? Yeah, it was his first rock concert. Wow. Okay. I'm it, prepare him. So that's one of the reasons I was willing to travel so far because the only other time they were coming closer to us was Columbus, but I was going to be in the middle of school. So I was like, that's not going to work. <laughs> okay. Okay. See, I travel too. I guess this is good because, and I've told this in the podcast, I'm not going to bore people with the story that, uh, you know, I'm going to see New Jersey at MetLife Stadium next week, which is the holdover from all the canceled dates. But I wanted to see another show, and this was the show that was drivable, was doable for me. Right. So coming from Queens, it was, I don't know, maybe three hours, would you say? I don't think it was. A, yeah, it wasn't three hours. It was hours. about four for me. Okay. Because it wasn't bad. The worst part for me was getting out of New York City, and, and maybe if you had the same problem, getting into, because I've never been to Hershey Park. I mean, I was at the actual Hershey Park with the chocolate when I was like a little kid. But I've never been to, to the stadium. Is it always that crowded? Like, have you been to that stadium before, despite it being a distance? Never. Never. Nope. It was okay. the first for me to. So. Oh, okay. So, because you said you told me off here, you're from a town in Ohio that I, I don't know. It's not Youngstown. I mean, you were born there. Well, I was born and raised in Youngstown. I live in Hubbard now, but Hubbard is all of five minutes outside of Youngstown. So we're okay. right on the border of Pennsylvania. I could be in Pennsylvania in five minutes. Okay. Um, but it's the complete opposite end of Pennsylvania. So it was a four hour trip. Oof. Was this the, the closest show to you? The next closest was going to be Columbus in September, which oh, that was only going to be about an hour difference. You just didn't want to wait. No. And I want to take my son, like I said, to his first one. He's still in high right, school. Right. And that one, I think, is on a Wednesday or a Thursday. So it's like, yeah, we'll just do this one and drive for four hours. Okay. Well, you're a good dad. Well, thank you. What did you listen on the way? Did you, were you listening to Guns N' Roses? That's always a, uh, an interesting <clears throat> audit. Like, we were listening to a uh, bunch of stuff because I had my brother with me. Uh, okay. My older brother's actually gone with me to every GNR show we've gone to. Wow. Okay. And gosh, I don't even remember everything we listened to in the car. There was. Probably some Velvet Revolver in there. Um, i trying to remember. He had Skid Row on for a bit. I put on Skillet for a bit. So, okay. all kinds of stuff. Okay. I, uh, that, that's always a question of, like, do you listen to the band and kind of you get psyched up? Like, I, I, I do, listening to the band that you're going to go see. Or some people don't want to spoil it, and they just want to enjoy the music live that day. And, that, right. and that's it. But uh, yeah, I don't. I think we just listen to the, the radio. Sometimes that, when I'm out of state, I like listening to the uh, the local radio. Uh, that I yes, guess they're, we don't. they're nerding me. So, all right. So we both had a, a a pretty long travel. I will say, the plan was for us was to stay over. Uh, but I we just decided not to. I was too amped, and I. I I actually have to do the morning show all this week. So I'm like, you know what? If I want to, I want to sleep in my own bed. I'm like, I can drive home. And I drove home last night. We got home maybe around 2 a.m. It's not too terrible. We stayed. Um, by the time we got out of the parking lot, I don't, it was after midnight by the time we got out of the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's always another challenge. We, I, I waited. I've learned. See, I don't know, uh, Rich, how many, 
it's cool that you volunteered as when I put it on Twitter to say, like, hey, was anybody at the sure. show and 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 want to be on this uh this episode? And that's what I'm like. If you if I seem distracted, I'm looking up because my Twitter is going going crazy right now because I'm uh, I was tweeting the set list. Sorry, Ian Scotto, my my former co-host, still current friend. I know it's sacrilege. That's why I did. And maybe Rich, this might be uh, one of the things I want to talk to you about. If you saw that I. It was sent to me by uh, another former listener, co-host, uh, Eric P. I don't know where he got it. Uh, the, the leaked set list, the one that has the dinosaur. The yeah, I saw that. And it was right on up until where they could have played the new song that we, you know, we call hard school. And, mm-hmm. and that's when it changed. So what what was like i guess tell me walk me through your experience i guess like and also your song like uh how old is he again and just like your excitement for that day and like when did you guys leave and did you wear gnr shirts i i'm the guy who wears this shirt well actually i wore my podcast shirt but i have my <laughs> my hat so uh yeah tell me yeah that, you up to it i saw get- you sitting in the one area that hat was the giveaway but i was trying to get my seat from the merch which was nuts so i was just like yeah yeah let's just get to our seats <laughs> Uh, I mean, we're all obviously excited. This is this was my fifth time seeing them. Okay. Um, it was his first, and it was being his first rock concert. He was super excited. It's JNR is not his favorite band, but it's in his top. I think he's probably like more into like Foo Fighters would be more of his current one. We tried to get to that, but it was sold out so quickly. Um, yeah, I couldn't get those either. When you were at MSG, yeah, we were in Cincinnati. We tried, and I think they were gone on pre sales. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's a hot ticket, and, and I I will say what Rich, before I forget, when did you get your tickets for this? Like, when did you buy? We got uh, them today. The they went on sale. The, okay, me too. Yeah, it's interesting, and it's not a Guns N' Roses thing because I, I want to acknowledge that people are thinking about that about like ticket sales. That's a concert thing. That's like seems to be across the board, whether it's people not wanting to spend money, uh, because of lost jobs or whatever reason they have. Uh, COVID is certainly a factor. Um, but I, that's not a Guns N' Roses thing, although that place was packed last night. It was like, very packed. It wasn't sold out, but I was surprised that it wasn't. There's people everywhere. Yeah, it was, it was, it was packed. It was, I can move whatever. I know well enough. Um, I don't know what I, I want to tell you about my handicap adventures, but that's another story. Uh, <laughs> but your son's excited. I know a four hour trip is, is a long time, but when you were there, was it, it you had to wait on that long ass line though to, to get to the, the stadium and it's just like you're so amped up and you're just sitting there going one mile an hour oh let's go oh that was horrible we were stuck i mean it wasn't the worst i mean i've been there worse um yeah. the worst i've ever been there was one time oh 2007 we saw tom petty and that was just miles and miles and miles of back to traffic wow. so this wasn't all that bad the worst is when we finally found a spot and had to walk and the walk was very lengthy and we were just getting excited to get in. He wanted to see the opener, actually, because he's a Van Halen fan and was curious. So he was pretty excited. He's like, oh, my gosh, I hope we don't miss this. So he was awesome. really rubbed up. <laughs> see, I missed uh, the beginning of it. I may have missed uh, a couple songs, if not one at least. I mean, I saw Distance, which I was really happy. Uh, but I yeah, think but we missed good. a couple because we were stuck in the merch line. Yeah, I also went to get merch lines. You, uh, do you, did you get anything? If you haven't noticed, if you're watching on Zoom, I got, hopefully your son got this. This is technically for a child, even though it fits on me, kind of. <laughs> it says, I survived Guns N' Roses. It's a light teal blue. It's a, 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 kind of like, a, I guess, a dinosaur bone like with slash hat, you know, dinosaur, a skeleton, rather. It's badass. I don't know. Did you? Very nice. Um, we both just got a couple of hats. We're kind of bigger guys, so we kind of got sized out of the shirt department. <laughs> All right. Well, I had to go kid sizes. Sorry. <laughs> we don't have to make our, our sacrifices and also behind me if you're watching on zoom this is really cool especially if you're into halloween like me the orange and black long sleeve with the skating nice. i mean that's a <laughs> i guess also the funny thing is since i'm uh um i'll go through puberty one day but like my my, <laughs> my fiance and i we can share clothes like we're, we're kind of like the same size so she can she's you know it's like we got four that shirts <laughs> when we can just share them uh all right, so then you're in. Where were your your seats, if I may ask? We were in Section F. 
Okay, I was G. All right, we were friends. Yeah, we were friends. I think we were we were second row, uh, so we were we weren't too far back. Okay. Yeah, me neither. And I will say because I looked the day of, and I may have said this on on social media, and I will give credit to the Hershey Park Facebook whoever runs that social media because they helped me out because all the handicapped seats were sold out right away. Oh, and even okay. before, I will say where um, parking, and as I moved this pinball poster behind me. Uh, I, all the handicap parking was taken up for at least two hours. And I showed up basically uh, at five o'clock, like when the doors open. So that's what they were, they were saying. Like I was out of luck. Some of these, I guess the security usher of, you know, people instructing you to deliver your cars. They helped me go a little closer. I had to take a tram over. I may do, but man, if you're, it's not fun. Sometimes going to concerts, uh, there's, cause there's a lot of handicap fans. Obviously if they sell out, uh, but right. I, I found seats row G. Um, I really didn't have to walk too far, go up really any steps, just right there on the on the floor. So it was good for me, uh, sitting there as well. But yeah, so I just wanted to get that uh, because I, I want to make sure because it's like wow, there's a lot of handicap fans there that I, I saw. So I just want to make sure they're represented. Then I, I hear absolutely, you. yeah, yeah. Um, so when you when you were sitting down, do you were you Surprised because I noticed this when they came on. This is not Guns N' Roses of old. Like, when was your first time seeing them? I don't know. I I, I didn't have that experience because I was O2 where they were like, yeah, that was my first time. It was a, see, my okay. brother's a little older than me. Well, he's eight years older than me, so he got the experience like the Illusion Tour with Skid Row and that. So I was always jealous. Um, <laughs> but my first time was O2 in Cleveland, and old Guns N' Roses where they would come out super late. I mean, we had Mixed yeah. Master Mike opening, CKY, and yep. felt like we were waiting forever for them to come out. And then the same team the next time, it was in Cleveland as well, the Notorious Pigeons of Shit Metal concert. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, you're, you're right, because we're all everyone's so used to Axel being late, people making that joke that's not relevant anymore, yeah. at least for the not this lifetime post, you know, the reunion. Uh, and then people were still finding their seats when Axel yep. was coming on, playing it so easy. And it's, I don't know what that's like as a performer. You know, I, maybe uh, Wolfgang, the opening act, expects that to a bit, even though it was pretty full at the time. But mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, just going into it, can you like, what, do you, were you watching your son's face or were you watching the stage? I was watching both. Um, I mean, we were sitting there waiting for the guns to come on, and he was getting impatient. He's like, oh, come on, come on. I was like, dude. It's like this is nothing. <laughs> I was there in '16 for the Pittsburgh show on the first leg of the reunion tour, uh, not in this lifetime. And I was like, he started right on time for that. I, I was basically expecting pretty on time here. It's like I remember the one time we sat there for three hours waiting for him to start. We can get out of the arena probably two o'clock in the morning. This was easy. <laughs> I know that's why I was able to drive home last night. Yep. And, and I got home at a time that sometimes Guns N' Roses would first go on. Which is just it's where we're at right now. So, you know, let's, let's talk about the serious stuff and that's expectations. What, as a fan, you know, your, your son, this is like his first concert. You know, uh, if he wants to come on and just tell his experience, he can at any point, by the way. Uh, He's sitting next to me. Do you want to talk? Do you want, does he want to tell his experience before we uh, get into the nerd? <laughs> he doesn't have to. It's up to you, bud. Uh, sure. Hold on. Here, hold my phone. All right. Hi. What's going on, man? Tell what's up. So what's your name? Uh, my name is Nathan. Nathan, nice to meet you. I love your hot dogs. Oh. Have you ever... <laughs> Sorry, that was a terrible, terrible joke, and that's where my my brain goes. Uh, it goes to it goes to food. I've, I've uh, heard that many times, <laughs> and I apologize. Uh, so, <laughs> so it was fun. Obviously, were you excited? You know, this was your first like it was your first concert ever. It was not like you were at anything yeah. prior. Uh. This is technically the first rock concert. I've only been to like a Christian concert before. That was my first concert technically okay. back before shutdown in March or yeah, March, I think. So yeah, this is my first rock concert and uh, forgot what I was going to say. No, that's all right. I do that all the time. You know, Rich can tell you that. Uh, <laughs> but it was cool. Something I, I, I guess I don't want to forget by, by talking to you now. Is that I, it was all ages, you know, kids young, way younger than you, way older yeah. than your dad. It was just all over. It was 
you know, guys, girls, it was everybody. So was that kind of cool? Did you expect to see, you know, old people like your dad? Or you, oh, it is, there's kids here. This is cool. These young people. I kind of expected more just seeing older people there. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. And honestly, for going for what age I am, because uh, I wanted to originally go back when my dad saw uh, saw them back in 2016, but he wouldn't let me because of my age at the time. And honestly, when going, I could see why. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, to give an honest assumption on it but besides that i thought uh i expected more older people but eh, it's whatever All right. what was your your favorite song did you have like a, a favorite song to sing along to did you know all the words going into it or no i knew most of the songs there were only a few songs i didn't know the words to my favorite out of all of them was either better or knocking on heaven's door oh wow okay that's a nice you know it's like a nice example of both different phases of Guns N' Roses. So I like mm. that. Because, in my opinion, I really love Chinese democracy. All right. I, li- I have the same opinion as you, so I like it. All right, cool. Um, I'd say, like, if I were to give, like, a least favorite performance, it would probably be Slither. <laughs> okay. But all the- so, because, yeah. yeah. How come? Why, why come you didn't like it? I honestly don't feel that Axel's voice fits the song too much, but at least they have Slash and Duff for yeah. the performance. Sure. Yeah. You know, it, I would prefer, and I've said that I, hearing Axel, I think there, there are other Velvet Revolver songs that would fit his voice. So I want to know if you yeah. know anything, whether if, if your dad wants to come back in, if you want to say, and it was during one of your favorite songs, Better. It <clears> seemed like something went wrong. Yeah, like, like technically. And I thought and I said to my my fiance who I went with, I'm like, did he like miss some lyrics? Because I'm continuing in my terrible singing voice. And I apologize to all the people around me hearing me sing. It is what it is. I was I was enjoying myself. I said, did he get some lyrics? And you know what? Because she's such a, a wonderful person. She said she didn't make fun of him or anything. She's like, you know what? Her beloved Dave Matthews forget the lyrics all the time. So it's just it happened. And, but what I noticed, maybe you guys noticed, is that Axel would grab the microphone, not to sing sometimes. There must be some sort of lever or switch or something that he's looking off yeah. stage, talking to somebody. So it'll go from maybe the PA speakers and singing to communicating with his people. And it seemed like there was something wrong. Did you notice yeah. that at all? Yeah, because it cut out for like a good, I want to say like 10 seconds. Yeah. Possibly. Because... It just didn't seem right because he fully just stopped singing after a little bit and then went back. So it was probably more of a technical error. So what was going on? I, I remember thinking to myself, because I really I've seen maybe Slither twice in person. And I, and I like I said before, I prefer maybe other uh, Velvet Revolver songs for his style. But yeah. I, for me, it was like the favorite this leather performance I've experienced live. So I thought it was great. Yeah. But did you guys watch, and this has, this is where my brain's going. Axel on Looney Tunes. Yes, okay. I have. So I was lucky enough to interview the, the writers of that episode. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about Axel coming in and recording rock the rock. The last mm-hmm. time you know, Axel's last song. And yeah. it was a real sneak peek and everything. The Axel, he's like, I'm going to sing real high, then real low, and like medium, then real low, and like different. And I'm thinking that's just the way Axel is, and he's layering it with everything else. And yeah. if there's a technical issue going off, I think that messes with his vocals. So that's, that's, yeah. my, that's my opinion, if I can give that. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair uh, yeah it's probably <laughs> kind of what set off slither a little bit in my opinion or for uh i thought he did good decently on it up to the first half but towards the middle part i think kind of sounded a little bit rough but i do think that axel would do better with doing other velvet songs like possibly like sucker train blues yeah. or a few others honestly i think sucker train blues would really fit axel and guns and roses especially yeah, I, I feel the same way uh, also about um, – they didn't do it last night. 
because it was in that leaked the, the sound check of a black hole sun. Like there are other sound garden <laughs> songs I would like to hear, but you know what? Play guns and roses songs. So did you know, these are songs I hadn't heard live yet. Do, did you know dead horse? Um, I you probably do since you seem to be uh, such a super fan. No. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Honestly. Did you, did you, did you like it? Cause that was something I hadn't seen before. That's a deep cut. Yeah. Oh, that's a one. That's a, I, I honestly enjoyed the whole set list for the um, concert. I thought uh, they did really good. And I thought that song was good as well. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. So overall, you had a good time as my cat makes an appearance. Please don't press it. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. So, oh, I had a, huh? Sorry. I was just going to ask it overall. Like, you know, did you, like, oh, yeah. Did you I thought it was a really good experience, honestly. Uh, especially. Oh, I mean, saying the wrong words. I uh, probably gonna remember this concert forever. <laughs> okay. Would you go again? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of what it's all about. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, uh, like, what's your favorite? What's your favorite team? If you're from Ohio, like Ohio, is is it the um? Oh my! Wait, you guys have a new team now. Am I right? Would you be? You're a Cleveland fan, or no? What would be your favorite? team uh are you a guardians fan a cleveland guardians fan or no yeah technically but <laughs> yeah i know i know um, yeah. i'm just using this as like an now uh analogy so who's your favorite uh cleveland indian player of all time uh of all time i I'd, for before they traded him i'd say Corey kluber all right so as as a yankee fan i'm sorry I, I, yeah I, 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 <laughs> So let's just say, I mean, he's, he's obviously still playing, but Corey Kluber, yeah. he, he wants to keep playing until he's 59. And guess mm-hmm. what? That's the same age as Axel Rose. Yeah. And the difference being, Cleveland's got to win. Guns N' Roses <laughs> doesn't have a win, doesn't have to win. You just have to have a good time. Yeah. So if your favorite people are still out there having a good time, which you did, you know, but Corey Kluber, if he's 59, He's obviously not going to pitch the same. He can pitch, yeah. you know, okay. I'm sure there are 59 year olds that are okay, but uh, do you understand? I don't know if that's a, that's a, that's a yeah. That's a page, but, uh, but anyway. yeah, I have this one. Right, cool. Thank you. I appreciate you, Nate. I appreciate you. Now, Thank I, you. I hope it's okay if I call you Nate. I feel like we're friends now. Yeah, that's completely fine. Okay. Thank you. Can I have Rich back? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I yeah. love it. Thanks, man. I appreciate. It. I feel. I feel like I'm part of your family now. Thank you. Oh, no problem. It's it's fun. I'm enjoying it. So uh, I guess I'll, I'll ask you some questions. I asked your son, like, what was your favorite performance, and I guess your thoughts on maybe the technical issues or your perspective of it. Probably my favorite performance of the night would be better. I mean, vocals were really good, except for when things were cutting out. And I, ever since Slash came back into the fold, I love the intro that he put into it. Uh, technical issues are what they are I mean to me it definitely looked like he was trying to sing and nothing was coming out but it didn't ruin the night for me why would it exactly things happen exactly and it just goes to say these things happen if these are the worst things that happen at a Guns N' Roses show which we know has been well documented is far from the worst thing to happen at a Guns N' Roses show this is just great you know, so I'm looking forward to it. Are you going to go see them again on this tour? I forgot if you, you had said. Or... Probably not on this tour, um, but next time they come around, we'll see what happens. Okay. Well, I appreciate you sharing, you know, your insight and, uh, you know, sharing the, and also obviously Nate, you know, big Nate sharing his, uh, his, his insight as well. I love it. Thanks for having him join in. So um, any you know what? I want to ask while I have you here, uh, what I do for fan obsession. Do you guys, you might both say better. I always ask, what's your favorite Guns N' Roses song? And what's your favorite piece of memorabilia? So do you guys have an answer for, for both? My song, same one has been for a long time as You Could Be Mine. Okay. Um, memorabilia, not even anything I bought from the show. I actually have Appetite for Destruction signed by Slash in there. Nice. Nice. So. Okay. Anything you want to add? <laughs> uh, so, favorite song, right? Yeah, favorite I, song, favorite. Um, yeah. Uh, 
favorite song would either be Sweet Child of Mine or Better. I can't choose between the both. You don't have to. And Memorabilia. Uh, probably my vinyl of Appetite. Nice. I have Basically anything that your dad has that he's going to leave to you in his will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, oh, thank- my God. Thank you guys. You guys were both uh, awesome. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that does it for this episode of Appetite for Distortion, doing this review of uh, Hershey Park. I had a good time. Nate had a good time. Rich had a good time. I, looking around, everybody had a good time. Had a good time. So I'm going to do that for the new uh, New Jersey show. I'm going to find one of you and we'll see if it's a family affair with that one as well. So <laughs> when will I do that one? Well, probably Friday or we'll, we'll see. Uh, but I'll just say in the words of Axel Rose concerning Chinese democracy, I don't know if uh, soon is the word, but you'll see it.